Okay. So, hi everyone, and this is the start with a disclaimer. This is a live session. Some backstory. I was not planning to do that because I ran out of time to prepare my other presentation. Then I saw that my name was still on the program on the of the Congress, uh, the Jane Beyond. So I say, okay, whatever, it's a, a, a live session, so I can do that. This means that I never tested this before. This means that things will get broken, and so please don't like, get mad at it. Uh, this session, in this session, I just start with uh, an example on a vulnerable machine, just to try what you can do to attack a web application. Then uh, I just talk about uh, about some tools that you can use to uh, find entry points and to analyze web application or even uh, Android app to let's say reverse engineering them. So first of all, let's start with a vulnerable box. What is a box? Well. To just train ourselves, just to make some practice, there are several vulnerable machines out there, and you can find them on uh, vulhub.com. It's a site where people are just displaying and publishing vu uh, virtual machines that contain uh, vulnerable applications. So it can, it's pretty easy to, to use because you just have to download them and then you can import inside your VMware or VirtualBox uh, software. So the one we are going to use is this one. Uh, to bad the, uh, the resolution is not great, but this name is Bilu Box, and this is they give you some hints what there are. They are even um, nice, sometimes they are nice to put the context because this is a kind of challenge. Someone is just trying to create a, a box and test you to crack it, just for fun. So what I did was to import this one and we are going to power it. And this is why it boots. I'm just talk about the my current setup. I'm during this session. I'm using Kali Linux. Okay, you can see from the logo. This is not a requirement or something something like that. It's just easy to use. Kali Linux is a Linux distribution that is focused on security and. Uh, Basically, it's just another uh, Linux distribution. There is nothing fancy, but there are some differences. For example, you actually work as root. Why? Because the almost 99% of commands that you are issuing uh, requires to be root. So instead of um, spending your time to uh, type sudo, because you are just sudoing everything, they just give you the root access. So you yeah, have just to be careful of what you do. And, but this doesn't mean you must use this kind of distribution. You can just use whatever you want uh, Linux tool. This is just handy because uh, it always, uh, already has several tools installed and compiled. While if you use another Linux distribution, you have to download, compile, configure everything from scratch. So it's just useful. So, my virtual machine booted and we are going to uh, try to see what happens <coughs> well first of all i have to understand where is my machine because i am typing with if config i can just try to um, i have a private network for this session i just tell when where to create a private network from with me and my uh, virtual machine. So basically, I'm I have this address, and I have to understand what's actually running on this machine. 
First of all, I have to find the IP address because I'm just here, I know who I am, but I don't know the other uh, machines on the, on the network. So I'm going to use uh, a scanner, it's named a map. A map is very famous and uh, used for scanner. It can do a lot of things, really, really a lot of things. Just picture it as a port scanner. It just given an IP address range, it can test all the available ports open, TCP and UDP. And it can do more things like that. For example, it can just try to understand the operating system if there is vulnerable software running and something like that. Now we are just using it to try to find our uh, what's the IP address of our box. So I can just give a map. This is my IP address, but it can, as I said before, support a range with dash 34. I just tell him to uh, see with this is CDR notation and just tell him to try all the 265 address in my range. Basically, he will try from uh, not, you just find it. So it's, it's basically he tried every possible IP address, changing the last three digits. This is the short description. This is our the IP address of our box. And as you can see, a map was available to find two ports open, 22 and 80. And 22 is SHH. And 80, of course, is web server. Now, usually you can just start to investigate these ports and see if what's inside that. But for the sake of simplicity, we are just keeping to the web content. So we have the IP address and we can just try to visit. Well, we have some uh, results. <laughs> this is the home page. Don't blame me. This is the creator that did that. Please show me your SQLized skills. So we have a form. First of all, let's take a look at the source code just to understand what's happening because sometimes we have hints or something uh, inside that. Well, as you can see, there isn't anything. And we can just try to, uh, to log in. Okay, we have this message that we have when our password is wrong. Well, thank you, best best, but no, thank you. And what we can do now is try to understand what's actually running on this web server. And to do that, we can, we can use a utility program called Dirbuster. Dirbuster is pretty easy. Its usage is pretty easy because it will simply given a word list of uh, files or directories, you will just try to uh, find if there are any, any files. And I, it comes with a word list, if I can find it. Okay. <coughs> and I can just make it start. Okay, this is our the results. There are making me go faster. Basically, it tries several known files, name of files and folders, and just try everything, and they are uh, output to the as results. This is interesting because, as you can see, we can just understand what's happening on this web server, on this web application, and we have several results. Some, some of them are with a 403 uh, error, other we have uh, 200 results. Result code it means this is something that we can use. So what we can do is try to understand what's happening. For example, we can try to visit this event. Oh, this is nice. We have a PHP info panel. Nice because you can just give us this is using an old version of PHP 5.3.10. Well, a bit old. This is nice. Then we can just try to visit them. 
nothing. Well, this makes sense because it's a PHP file. It does mean that if I visit it, the same old uh, uh, define it JX or die. Maybe yes, there are files, but I can access them directly. So what I can do is try them. Nothing. Uh, we have a di directory. Oh, this is nice because we have a directory listing. It's nice. So what's inside that? Okay, we have some images. Okay. Oh, from periods of the Caribbean. Okay, nice. Good to know. Now we are doing what is called enumeration. Just to try what's happening because we have to understand what is running, what is its purpose. The first thing that you have to do is to use the web application, not to try to break it because otherwise you're just applying a wrong mindset because we are trying to break it and you can't understand what's happening behind the hood. You have to try to understand, just do some reconnaissance and see what's happening. For example, if you can keep going, this is test PHP 5 seems interesting because as we know, when we are testing things, things get broken. So let's try to open it. Hmm. This is interesting because we have another message. What does it mean? File parameter is empty. Hmm. So what happens if I try to pass it? Okay. C.php maybe? Yeah? C.php because <laughs> <laughs> we can try okay, C.php. Mm, nothing. So but much. but what we can do. Okay. This is an extension for Firefox. You can just use a uh, from command line, but this is just more useful to use. We can just try with post data. You can tell him to, to load this URL and then use this file parameter. Use well, sorry, the old trick, edit mm -hmm. password because passwd is seem well you can think that this contains a password but it is uh, links it doesn't it's a file that is readable by everyone because it just contains the list of the users so let's say oh that's nice because it actually downloads something so let's take a look here. this is not what you think about <laughs> we are going to review that later i am honest i'm not joking and we are going to see that. I would wanted to move it, but don't worry. I'm going to tell you exactly what we are going to do. It's not what you think, okay? And you can see we have an actual result, okay? So this means that the test.pp file is broken. It's vulnerable. You can just, uh, this is a local file inclusion. This is interesting. So how we can exploit that? Because we can just, we have a hint here, the test house, show me your SQLi skills. Well, we can try, this means that most likely there is a SQL injection vulnerability in this page. But we can just try to some good old tricks, that is with a, a dash, a single apostrophe. Let's try even here. But it doesn't work. Usually we have. Usually we should have something that there's maybe an error or something like that. Now, for the sake of simplicity, uh, uh, there are tools that usually could be used to exploit SQL injections. For example, there is a tool named SQL Map that does exactly what it says. It's a tool that is used to exploit SQL injections. You can just give it a vulnerable point and it will try several different techniques to exploit this SQL injection. And but we are not, this is a useful tool, but as all uh, automatic tools, sometimes it fails because, well, it's clever, but not clever enough. What we can do, if you remember, is try to understand what is happening inside the web application. This means, since we have a te the test file 
that is vulnerable to local file inclusion, we can just ask our test file to reveal the source code of the application so we can understand what's going on. So, for example, if we are going to use this and provide the data parameter and say file index dot PHP. Okay, now you can find, you can see this is the source code of our index.php file. And what we are interested in is here. This is where they are trying to provide the authentication of our, uh, our user. As you can see, there is something going on because it's all decoding our, our string and, st and is stripping the single apostrophe. This is why we couldn't do that. But this is interesting. What is interesting is how this query is built. Because let's try to use something where you can take a look at it. Okay, this is our query. Okay. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Why uh, did PHP not parse this to HTML output? This this is because okay, we can just answer your question asking test PHP to reveal its own code. This is what happens because test.php is a broken file, and basically what happens when you are providing the file parameter in the post. Uh, request actually it downloads the file so what happens if file exists it's basically read the files and flush to the, to the output okay. so this is why yeah I missed the uh, part this is why you can just uh, see the contents of the file so this is our uh, this is our SQL query and as you can see we can just try to get clever because if we remove if we remove the just we're going to translate it to uh, okay basically this is the raw query okay this is the raw query not in SQL Okay, this is the query in SQL, not in PHP, given that this is the password and the name. So, what we can do here is try to trick this kind of uh, this, uh, this query to return an actual result and tell him that we are good to go. So, what we can do. Hmm, Actually, I had notes before, but as I saw, I forgot. Uh, okay, good. And basically, what we can do is trick it and tell him, for example, to use uh, password is coming, is going before. And then we have the uh, username. What we can do here is just to use uh, or one one dash put a password and here something. No, I remember I had notes. Sorry, this is the part where I tell you that things get broken. You didn't put a quotes around it. The quotes I can use it. I, here you are. Oh, this, this is why it's useful to take notes when you do things. <laughs> and, okay, basically, yeah, okay, here we go. We have space, and then backslash. I'm going to ask, oh, here we are. And we are inside. Why? Why we are inside? Let's try to replace everything inside this. Because if this is the 
extra code. Basically, we are going to replace these with a dash, a backslash, sorry. And then with these with all one, one. And terminate the string. Basically, what we're, we are doing, we are using the backslash to nullify this backslash. Oh, sorry, this backslash. So basically what happens is that we have this, nullify this, so basically pass is empty, and then we apply our always true, um, always true close, always true condition. This is what happens, and it terminates here and says or one equals one. Then we put uh, the semicolon and two dashes. And you have to remember to put a space because the double dash comment in SQL works only if there is, on some version of MySQL, if there is a space. In this way, this is an actual working uh, SQL command and we are inside the, the web application. We are authenticated. Well, what we can do now is going to take a look at the panel dodge dot well, first of all let's try to use the um, the application so let's see what show users are we have a table with some something and we can try to okay you get add, add things let's see what happens to the source code remember let's try to the panel.php hmm. okay okay this is the starting this is including uh, our part our <coughs> other files then we are just trying to uh, get all the files this is interesting because if we have a uh, continue options you will try to include what is inside the load param and this will come handy later because if you can try to upload it performs some checks on the on the image and then it gets stored and this is interesting because let's see what we can do we can just grab uh, we saw before okay let's reuse one of them for their fo uh, photos I can just download it put it uh, here okay okay just try to use the application so we can provide uh, maybe rename it is better okay I can provide a new image, name, something that is already inside, and upload. Hmm. This is interesting because it says that this is not working. Hmm. I think that the real problem is this one. Let's try Jack. Check for uppercase letters. Sorry? Uh, you use uppercase with JPT? No, no, it's not that. Most likely it's a test that I did before and I didn't have time to reset it. This is why it's not working. As I said before, it's just rushed before. Okay. Okay, upload successfully. We have provided uh, a list and here we are. This is our new user. Uh, we saw something interesting because if we provide the continue uh, arguments is doing something with the load param what does it mean it means that let's take a look at the suits code well maybe it's better doing this yeah This form is wrong. Uh, 
may usually create broken application, but this is why. Okay. Basically, here we are. We are. This is basically. This is our um, select list. Is the load feeds the load param. Then we have the continue param. Basically, what we put inside the the option of the select list will be loaded by the by by the application. But as you can see here, there is no sanity check. What does it mean? We can try to trick it and do what we want to do. Uh, a trick that is used, we can just try to upload a PHP file and then it will be included. This could be useful. Let's try uh, a quick no. Yeah. Let's try a quick trick. So we can just put a PHP info command. Close it and call it uh, test it's not useful and J. Okay. We can try to add an user and Okay, we we'll try it with some data, and it doesn't work. Why? Because if you take a look at here, when we are trying to upload it, basically it's trying to perform some sent checks. For example, first of all, it's checking for the extension. So, okay, we try to upload a PHP file, so it's not working, so we have to get clever. Let's try to do something different and try to un upload this trick it and change the name. Let's call it JPEG. Maybe we are lucky. And again, we are going to use this time this kind of file. Yeah, now I get pissed because I saw, t told you that they only accept image files. Why? Because if you take a look at the lines before, um, after that, you can see that it actually tries to read the image and test that if this is a really image. So this is a problem because we can't just upload a text file and call it JPEG. But there is a trick, as always. What we can do is, uh, this is an old trick, we can just try to take a, a, a JPEG file and then tweak its properties. They are the EXIF properties. Because if you take a look at these, there is a tool that is called. So we, the EXIF properties are just metadata associated to the image. There are several things like the author, the dimension, and something like that. There is the EXIF tool that is used, and as you can see, there are a lot of data. They are inside the bytes of the, our application, the, our image. As you can see, there is a lot of them. What we can do is to actually write this kind of, inside this kind of details, a string, a malicious PHP code. You can do that, uh, I think, just here oh. where it is okay okay we can just add a new uh, tag call a description and put whatever we want in this case it will be uh, let's try it this way okay this is nice because if I try Take a look at uh, our image now in the comments. Here you are. Description PHP echo one two three. So what I can do is to trick our web application to upload a really a perfect working working uh, image. It's called malicious.
Okay. Oh, okay. Because upper case. And we have to trick our web application. Okay. Now it made it through because it's a valid image, it's not a, a text file. So it's, it was uploaded. In fact, if we take a look at here, here we are. We had this image. If you take a look at it, this is a really image, it's nothing, it's perfect working. But we have we can just trick it to as we can see before, the, the web application was including things without checking. This means that if uh, I can do this one. I just going to use a bar because it's easier. And we can do this. We can load the URL. And if we take a look at the source code, oh, this, this resolution is killing me. And we can just okay post to this kind of uh, oh, this page and use the parameter. First of all, we have to feed the continue parameter. Which is okay. Then we have to supply the load param, and we can see that upload the can remember the name delicious yeah but it was in a folder let me see what it was i can remember if it, okay dear is currently okay it's plotted images slash my shoes dot j back and oh, Oh. And it's not working. Great. And this is why I have no. Okay. So I'm just doing to do this in this way. Okay, this is quite a bummer because it was I mean, this way. I was, I think I can just treat there was a previous one, and this is why I was telling you the things will get broken, and it's always happening this way. And are you in the right folder? Yeah, I think so. Is JNet executable? Ah, sorry, this is no. Oh, this right one. Uh, and oh, sorry. I think I remember why. Sure, right. Right. and uh, spend spend one and. Okay, I think I just call the day and stop here because I can obviously it's not working. And okay, I think I have to die in the script. No, don't worry about me. And
OK. OK. C4. Yeah, I have to supply the continue continue forums and the load will be uploaded images and issues. Why did you choose a short and and I'm sorry, I think I just skip to the second part of this presentation since we are just going uh, I'm sorry, this used to work, but as always, this is not happening. So, at the end of the day, this is what I was, we are going, we are running out of time, and I'm sorry about that, but I just explained you what I was going to do. Basically, when you upload it, you can just provide it a shell. We actually need a, this is a web shell. Here, so you can just take a look at it. Basically, you it will ex execute things that are inside the command param. This is useful because we can just try to execute system calls like uh, CD, LS, uh, uh, everything we want. In this way, we can actually upload a backdoor. To the, to the system and have an interactive shell like let's say this one you are seeing here in this way we have this is the process that we call the um, um, user uh, privilege escalation because you start with a user that is uh, the web user so it's not true you can do anything and you have to try a way to become root <coughs> To do that, uh, with this, since this, this is a really old uh, box, you can just try to find some exploits that are available, currently available. For example, this is, if you can take a look at it, is uh, Ubuntu 12.04.5. We can just look at the uh, exploit DB. ExploitDB is maintained by uh, people of sec offensive security. They are the same people that are creating uh, the Kali Linux, maintaining and creating the Kali Linux distribution. We can just search for okay, Ubuntu 12.04 exploit. Ah, <laughs> bags. Where are the bags? <laughs> Just skip. <laughs> yeah, I think you say, yes, I'm a robot. Okay. Okay, he is happy. Okay, as you can see, there are several different exploits. The one that we are going to, we were going to use is this one, overlay FS. Basically, it happens to the, it applies to several different uh, uh, several different uh, Linux versions and in this case this is really simple you don't have to uh, really take a look at everything inside it because uh, well they usually work out of the box what it's interesting is at the end of this because basically it's is calling uh, the SU um, tool that basically you became root so your shell that was a um, limited pre uh, user shell the web service or apache uh, you with the apache user became for the time you are connected the root user this is the real problem and this in this way basically you own the server and I'm sorry that the presentation didn't exactly go where, uh, where it was planned, uh, but I just wanted to show you that sometimes, uh, even if you are, um, if you have a limited shell or at least a vulnerability, a vulnerability on your server, it could be really bad because I can just try to. Uh, interact with your system with uh, system calls 
and one, once I'm there, even if I don't have SSH access, I can just pawn a shell, even if it was not supposed to, because I can just create a channel between the remote server and my local environment. In this way, I can just upload a backdoor that actually spawns a real shell where I can just interactively and work with the file system. And finally, from here, if your server is not patched, this is bad because I can just pick and root. Now, since we still have 10 meals, I just want to tell you, for example, as an example, sometimes it's not required to become root to have uh, and to create uh, uh, issues. This is what I did uh, sometimes, uh, some time ago. There was a site on uh, a web on a hosting, and they were providing SSH access. So I just say, well, let's see. Just let's take a look. Let's see what's happening. And this is spoiler alert. I did become a root, but sometimes it's not required to become root to uh, provide. Uh, damage to the company. For example, uh, when I was uh, connected, the first thing that I did was to uh, search for passwords, plain, plain text passwords. And usually this is a shot in the dark because, well, you can find a lot of log files saying, well, password required or something like that. But in this case, there was something bad. There was a log of an installation of direct admin. And that such log contained the admin user email, the IP, and the password in plain text. As you can see, this is, was removed for privacy, for um, in plain text. So I just tried it, and I was in. I was, I mean, there was no exploit involved. It was just trying to search for some info. <coughs> say, oh, well, they're there. Let's try it. So I, this is the, as you can see, I was uh, the admin for direct ad admin. This means that I could just simply get inside and say, okay, your account is closed, you are closed, I'm deleting your data and your data. And again, there was nothing for a hosting company. This is a, a huge thing because, well, I can just disrupt, I'm not saying your business, but just a part of your, uh, a part of your server and problem with credibility is really high. But since I was there, let's say, what? Why you just choose, why I have to stop? Let's take a look around. And I took around, uh, there were some mounted devices. And for example, this is uh, a mounted device, an internal device, with, where there was the repository. And there was, uh, it was the internal repository there where there were a lot of scripts. Basically, they were just utility scripts, thing, things that you use to copy things around. around. And there was actually hard, you can just execute them because they were owned by root and they, these kind of files had the correct permissions. But now I had the, a connection to the internal network. So what I did, since I was able to connect, I said, well, let's take a look at this internal machine. So what I did was to create, a, it's called a tunnel. With SSH, you can just create a dynamic tunnel. So basically, your remote shell tells, OK, I'm here. Whatever you are feeding, I just re um, replicate to the internal network. I create, basically create um, on your machine that is in front of you, you open a port that is connected to the remote host. And on that remote host, basically uh, outputs everything to the internal network. Basically, it's like you were physically, you were inside of the internal network. Mm -hmm. That way I was able to run and map, that is the things that you saw before for uh, scanning, network scanning. And I saw that there was uh, an S, Network Attached Divider, was an extender. And then I just tried to uh, look for the four pass passwords because, well, they usually work. They changed it for the admin and the root, so thank God. 
but they didn't change for the guest account. So I was able to log in as guest. Well, at that kind of, I say, okay, that's it. I'm just not going to uh, mess around uh, more because things are getting tricky. So I contacted them, I told them everything and they fixed it. But the point that I want to, uh, to tell you is that, yes, you can just own a server, became a root. This is what usually happens, but it's quite hard to own root uh, a real server because, well, there are sets of means that you apply patches and do something like that. However, to, uh, to provide damage to a company, you're not required to become root because you can just use the information you have and if you were a malicious user, you can just um, disclosure to the world. And I think this is even worse than becoming root because you are going to disrupt uh, the business of a company. So this is the end, this is the conclusion of my session. Uh, again, sorry things get messed up, but I hope you can just find something useful to say. Do this. Thank you.